It's May 20th and I haven't posted for almost a month, sometime in April. We have been super busy working our tails off in the shop these past few weeks. Um, new main landing gear components uh, have arrived uh, now that we've got it all tested. Um, and we're just about to start welding next week to supply main landing gear to customers who've ordered. If you're interested in it, give us a call and we'll give you the price and we can get you on the, uh, on the list for the main landing gear. Uh, we are finishing up two FP303 quick build kits. They're going into the boxes shortly. And we've been preparing the Archon SF1 prototype for its debut at Oshkosh in the Sport Air USA booth. Um, as promised, I am going to be playing catch up with the Algae Yates videos. We are 22 videos behind in getting them posted for you to watch. Uh, so we got to get going on that. We'll be doing two to three posts per week. Um, so get ready for an algae overdose. Lastly, we have some great news coming down the pipe. Um, I can't write, announce it yet, but it's super exciting for Fisher. I will be letting you in on that in another video coming up soon. But until then, Algae will follow the intro and the notes from our sponsors. So here we go. This is Fisher Flying Products. I'm Dave Hertner. Welcome to The Nest. Our video newsletters provide weekly insight into building and flying our 15 wooden aircraft designs. Polini Motori of Italy is a gracious sponsor of our channel. Polini is the manufacturer of the Thor 303DS. Cozy Carb Ice Prevention Systems is a proud sponsor of this channel as well. Please take the time to watch our videos to the end as this assists us in the metrics that YouTube uses to rate our channel. Hit the like button if you feel that the content is worthy. We invite you to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button and hitting the bell so that you are notified whenever we post our newsletters. Hi, welcome to the channel. In this episode, the fin is basically constructed. Uh, gussets done and all the taper bits after the prep work we did in the last episode. So, let's get on with the video. Okay then, so uh, all set up, I put an extra block in here which I'm going to use a tapered uh, stirring stick and another one just to help push this lightly against the leading edge as a method of just clamping. I'll use normal clamps everywhere else. All the blocks have been done. I added an extra piece of uh, laminating material so it's got a piece top and bottom. It just makes it extra little bit of thickness for sacrificial stuff. Uh, it was just wide enough with the wand but I prefer to have that little bit extra. Minor issue there. So I've redrawn the center lines. They're all marked up. I put letters on. The, the annoying factor, one might as well say, is the two here are not at 90 degrees, so I had to make them individually. Uh, when you first look at it, you think it'd be a 90 degree joint, but it isn't. So we're all ready. I'm now. Uh, I've got all the ribs cut uh, with their appropriate uh, tapers on, marked up with the centre lines. The leading edge here has been set up so. The centre lines on the ribs uh, match up with the centre line on there, so that's at the correct height, uh, and it's clamped to the block, so it will stay where it is. Generally, uh, relatively easy sort of setup at the moment, so I'll get it glued. So a bit of time lapse. As you can see, I like to weigh out my resin for the mixing. I feel that when I'm doing sort of larger quantities it's more accurate but many people just do it purely by equal volume for the T88. It's uh, horses for courses. You can see I'm just putting glue onto the block faces, the end grain to let it soak in before I actually start clamping it. and I make sure everything's square. So, all glued up at the moment. Uh, all the joints have been glued, clamps. You can see I've got a lot of clamps going on. And you can see I've got uh, metal blocks around. They're just holding the ribs flat against the table to make sure everything is absolutely square that way. And a block and a square, just to check everything's upright. 
Uh, this is only in very lightly. That that was only in there just just to make sure that the joint was uh, closed up, um, but not crushed up. So keep everything sort of set up as it should be. Remember, we want to keep a light pressure to keep glue in the joint, not to squeeze it all out. And the other type of clamp which I've got, which is quite handy, is this little fellow down here, which uh, is for model aircraft. Uh, I've had it for model aircraft, which you just sort of squeeze and uh, and lock in position. And so you just sort of squeeze it and just push on that back pin and it locks it, which is really handy for these sort of narrow joints where you want a light clamping force. Uh, I found the work quite well so far. So, uh, on now to, I'm going to put in the gussets and you'll see time lapse on that as I put in the main gussets. The one which I'm going to leave out for the time being is this one because it's going to require uh, some slightly different treatment to the norm because we're going to end up with a curved uh, gusset going around and an inset curved gusset at that. So uh, a little bit more complexity and I'll deal with that on possibly the next video. Okay, unfortunately the time lapse of the gussets was lost. So you can see the prep. It's really important, I think, on a fin and rudder that uh, you have the gussets equal on each side because people can see both sides of the uh, fin and rudder. And uh, you don't want that showing through. They do show slightly through the covering, but uh, you want to make it as nice as possible. Okay, to round up, uh, had a bit of a bit of an issue with the gusset here because of the extra material I put into the uh, cheek blocks here. Um, but I got round that uh, and the gussets have all worked out extremely well. I'll talk about this gusset um, in the next episode. So 19 hours total. Right, okay, a little experiment on uh, glue joints to see what happens and why I like to uh, sand and remove uh, glue from the joints, excess glue from the joints uh, before I uh, glue them together. So I've got a piece of virgin wood here so this will be glued to another piece of wood in the normal format T88 on both sides and uh, clamped. I have a piece of wood here where the uh, T88 was applied and then wiped off uh, using denatured alcohol. I've got a piece of wood here where the resin was allowed to dry and then it's been sanded across with 80 grit. There's still a small amount of glue on the surface there but it's just about down to, to uh, basic wood. And then I've got a piece here which has got the glue applied uh, and the majority of it's all taken off but it's got a bit of a gloss on it because uh, that's the way it, it comes out finished. So all these will be bonded together and we'll see what happens when it comes to uh, trying to break them apart. Not very scientific but it's just an idea to uh, show my reasoning. Well the results not what I expected. Okay so let's test out and see which one's the uh, the strongest and, uh, and weakest. So I think my the order should go uh, virgin wood then possibly the cleaned with alcohol sanded uh, where the, the uh, epoxy was sanded with 80 grit and then the uh, left unsanded so in theory I've trimmed these down so it's just got the ends there we'll stick it into the vise and what we're looking for really is the glue joint not failing, the wood at each end should fail first and then maybe the whole lot split and crack across the middle so we'll just see how it goes. So this is the one which is bonded as our normal wood would be, uh, resin on both sides, have all had resin applied on both sides before the joint was actually closed. So let's see what happens. Yeah that's broken by, by the joint there but not on the joint. So as we might have expected. So this is the one that's cleaned with alcohol. We'll see how this goes. Yep, it's done it's done the same thing. So the joint hasn't failed. It's quite a big joint so in theory it shouldn't fail. 
This is the one that was cleaned with alcohol, so let's see what happens here. Yeah, so so far all three have failed the same way, and this is the one that was left. So quite unexpected as far as I'm concerned. I was expecting that one to possibly have split along the glue joint, but it hasn't. You could try it against the stub there, just see what happens. Yeah. So, quite a shock really. Uh, the T88 has, uh, has managed to keep a really good uh, joint going uh, despite in a way, uh, poor preparation, unsanded. Uh, yeah, and I, I've got to say that that has surprised me quite quite a lot. Uh, before we go on any further, uh, let's let's try out one of my test pieces. So these are the test pieces I use to check the batches of glue, shown in an earlier video. So these these are this is one of my test pieces, and this should break up either side. It shouldn't break on the joint. There we go, it, it's failed, but it's failed on the wood, it hasn't failed on the actual uh, joint. So that's a pass, that's what we're expecting to see. That is a past test piece. Okay, and uh, hope that was of interest. Definitely surprised me on, on the case of these. Uh, I thought these ones would break like that, uh, but I, I was anticipating a shear going where it had been left slightly glossy. Uh, but hey ho, now we know. Thanks again for watching. We try hard to bring you interesting content each week. To help us out, please like and share our videos if you feel the content is worthy. To receive the latest info from Fisher Flying Products, click the subscribe button and ring the bell. See you next time in the nest.